working with text and text boxes. Publisher is a page layout program to help you create complex and professional looking publications. That is why they give you so many tools that help you insert and arrange artwork and images. But let's face it, the most important part of any publication is the text. The pictures and graphics are only supposed to highlight and enhance it. The way that Publisher handles text is what separates it from simple word processing programs like Microsoft Word. That isn't to say that Word isn't complex or that you can't create impressive, visually interesting publications with it. You can. But because Publisher is typically used to deliver professional quality publications to commercial printers, it offers slightly more sophisticated tools for typesetting. For instance, tracking and kerning options are more complex in Publisher than in Word. Tracking refers to the spacing between letters in entire blocks of text, while kerning refers to the spacing between two individual letters. We'll talk more about this later in this lesson. Any time that you enter text into a publication, you must enter it into a text box. Sometimes Publisher automatically creates a text box for you. You can, for example, open a blank publication and just start typing. In this case, Publisher automatically creates a text box that fits within the margins of the currently selected page. A text box is an object. You can resize these objects, move them, delete them, and even stack them on top of each other like you can other objects. Let's look at a simple text box. As you can see here, the text box is identical in nearly every way to any other object box. It's got the handle at the top, which you can drag left or right to rotate it. It's got circles in the corners, which you can use to easily expand or contract it. And the boxes between the corners to drag the sides out. What's more, you can even change the box's border. Text boxes are drawn onto your publication just like shapes. They do not have text in them, not even filler text when you draw them, but you can add text easily enough. To draw a text box, go to the Insert tab on the ribbon. Go to the Text group and then click on Draw Text Box. Your cursor will change to crosshairs, which look like a plus sign. Click and drag to draw the text box. Once you release your mouse, you'll see the text box in your publication. It will appear with a bounding box around it, as you can see here. To add text inside a text box, click within the text box. You'll then see the cursor. You can then type your text. By default, text boxes do not have a border around them. If you click outside of the text box in your publication, you won't be able to see it unless you have the text already added. However, you can format text boxes with border, fill color, and special effects. To do so, click on a text box. Go to the Shape Styles group in the Drawing Tools Format tab. Click on the drop-down arrow in the Shapes Gallery. The Shape Styles Gallery has different formats that you can use for your text boxes. Or, you can format your own by adding a fill color, a shape outline or border, and shape effects. The shape effects that you can add to a text box are the same effects we learned to add to images, using these buttons here. Deleting a text box is as easy as selecting the box, right click on it, and then choose delete object or cut. You can also select the text box and then press delete on your keyboard. Whenever you select a text box or create a new one, the text box tools format tab appears on the ribbon, as well as the drawing tools format tab. You'll see these new tabs on the ribbon, as you can see here. You should already be familiar with the Drawing Tools Format tab. Just as we learned earlier, from there you can change the border of your box, add a fill and 3D effects, and wrap other text around it. Now, we're going to focus on the options in the Text Box Tools Format tab. Let's talk about some of the buttons. The first button on the far left is called the Fit Text button. This tells Publisher how you want the text to fit into the selected text box. Let's look at the options and explain them. Click the Text Fit button. A drop-down menu will appear. Best Fit allows Publisher to determine how to fit the text. It takes into account the size of the text box and tries to guess what your intentions were. For instance, if you were to draw a large text box, type something into it and then choose this button, the text would expand to fill the entire text box. 
If you were to then type even more text into the text box, the text would shrink until all of it could fit inside. Shrink text on overflow. This option is almost the same as best fit, except its focus is on shrinking the text so it stays inside the text box. Unlike the best fit button, it will only expand text back to the original font size when the overflow text is deleted. Grow text box to fit. Instead of shrinking the text to fit inside the box, this button makes the box bigger to fit all of the text. The size of the text itself never changes. And do not auto fit. This option does not adjust either the text or its box. Overflow text, that is text that doesn't fit inside the box, is simply unseen. Instead, red buttons will appear in the border around the text box, telling you that overflow text exists. An ellipsis also appeared in a box near the bottom right hand corner of the text box so that you can click on in order to thread the text to another text box, which we'll talk about more later in this lesson. You can also drag the box to a bigger size by yourself in order to fit all of the text. The next button as we move to the right on the ribbon is the text direction box. The button itself is self-explanatory. It takes horizontal text in a text box and makes it vertical. Moving right on the ribbon, we find the hyphenation button. This button allows Publisher to automatically hyphenate the text in the selected text box. You might use the hyphenation button to better fit each line of text. Here is the hyphenation window, which allows you to turn automatic hyphenation on or off and to configure the hyphenation zone. In this example, the hyphenation is set to 0.25 inches of the right margin. That means if the syllable ends within 0.25 of the right margin, Publisher will hyphenate the word. Now let's skip over the font group in the ribbon because we're going to talk about those buttons in the next section of this lesson. Let's look at the alignment group instead. You can use the nine buttons here to change the text alignment within the selected text box. The options in the first line include left margin flush, centered text and right margin flush. In the next row, the same options are available for text that is centered vertically within the text box, and the final row shows text situated against the bottom margin of the text box. Use the columns button to break text into columns. And clicking the downward arrow at the bottom of the button gives you a few options. You can see your options are one column, two columns or three columns. To add even more columns or to configure the white space between each column, click the more columns at the bottom here. You can have up to 63 columns within a single text box. The margins button refers only to the margins inside the text box. That is, the white space between the edge of the text to the border of the text box. It is not the same as your page margins, which we talked about in an earlier lesson. Clicking the arrow at the bottom of the margins button gives you a bunch of quick configurations. If any one of these are adequate, click on it to apply it to the text box. If you'd like to create a custom margin, click the custom margins button at the bottom. This opens a dialog box. Here you can enter your own values and click OK when finished. Formatting text in Publisher is nearly identical to all other Office programs. The only difference is that there are two ways to access the text formatting tools. In Publisher, you can go to either the Home tab or the Text Box Tools Format tab on the ribbon. From either of those locations, you can change all of the attributes of your text, from the font style to character size to colour. Let's look at some of those tools found in the font group under the Text Box Tools Format tab. If you want to change the font type, click the downward arrow in the font field. You have access to every font installed on your computer in that drop down menu, but you should be aware that not all fonts can be embedded into the publication. To the right of the font field is the font size field. You can type in a custom value or use the arrow button on the right to select a preset. The smaller the number, the smaller the font, and vice versa. Alternatively, you can click the A button here to increase the font size by one value and this A button here to decrease the font size by one value. You can change the colour of the font by clicking the A button here with the black underline underneath it. The font colour of the text in the text box or selected text appears on the button below the A. This button here, the A with the eraser, clears all character level formatting from the text box. You may want to select boldface 
italics or underline a section of text within a text box. The boldface command in Microsoft Publisher is represented by an uppercase boldfaced B. Italics are represented by an uppercase italicized I and underlined by an uppercase U with a line under it. These buttons are located directly below the font type window in the font group. To add italics, boldface or underline to any portion of text within a publication, select the desired text, then click on the appropriate button. To the right of these three commands, you'll see two buttons with X's on them. This button here is called superscript and it adds a superscript character, which is a character that appears above the baseline. The first button here is the subscript character or one that appears below the baseline. Both of these characters are usually significantly smaller than the font size. E equals MC squared is an example of when you would use a subscript character. To the right of the super and subscript character buttons, we see the change case button. Click it and you'll see a selection of case options. Tracking refers to the amount of space between all of the letters on a selection of text. It is usually done to the text to change the overall appearance and make it easier to read. Kerning refers to the amount of space between two individual letters and is most commonly adjusted in headlines. Why? Because some combinations of letters may look awkward together, such as AW or VA, and may affect the flow of the eye over the text. As we mentioned earlier, Publisher gives you some tools to change these values. They can be found in the font group. When you click on this button here, the character spacing button, you'll be presented with a series of quick options as you can see here. If you'd like a little more control over the character spacing, click on the more spacing option at the bottom of the menu. This window is shown. From here, you can shrink or stretch the selected text or change the tracking options. You can also fine tune the spacing between two characters with the kerning options. A preview appears in the sample box. When you are satisfied with your selections, click Apply and then OK. Let's make this text bigger so it's easy to see on the screen. A drop cap is a simple embellishment that, if used correctly, can make your publications look more interesting and professional. Basically, all it is is a letter at the beginning of a section or a paragraph that is larger than the text that follows it, but instead of extending upward, which is what it would do if you just tried to increase the font size for a single letter, it drops a few lines down. Creating a drop cap in Publisher 2016 is incredibly easy. Just go to the text box tools format tab and click the drop cap button in the typography section of the ribbon. First, the cursor should be positioned in the paragraph you'd like to add the drop cap to, but it doesn't necessarily have to be in front of the letter that you want to add the effect to. Now, choose the drop cap style that you like. You can choose to place the drop cap within the paragraph or in the margins. To exercise a little more control over it, click Custom Drop Cap. You'll then see a dialog box. You can then have the letter drop as many lines as you'd like, and even choose how much space to put between it and the text that follows. We mentioned overflow text earlier. That is the text that simply doesn't fit inside a single text box. We also told you that text boxes that have unseen overflow text will have red buttons in the border and a bold ellipsis in a box in the lower right edge of the text box. Clicking the ellipsis loads the cursor with the overflow text. When a cursor is loaded like that, it turns into what looks like a coffee cup with some sparkly, magical substance spilling out of it. Once the cursor is loaded, you can click on another text box to thread the two text boxes together. That means all of the overflow text from the original text box will automatically fill the new text box. Whenever a text box is threaded, the border around it changes. You'll see a black arrow in the upper left edge of it and another one in the lower right edge of it. If there's no text box available, you can just click on an empty space and a new text box will be created. If you click on the left arrow, you'll be taken to the text box earlier in the thread. 
and an arrow on the right will take you to the text box later in the thread, if there is one. It should be noted though, that either of these arrows might be absent if there are no text boxes before or after it. For example, if it is the first text box in the chain, the left arrow will be absent. If it's the last text box in the chain, the right arrow will be absent. Just as you can add special effects to images and text boxes, you can also add special effects to text. To do this, go to the text box tools format tab and look at the word art styles group. You'll see the word art gallery here. By selecting the drop down arrow, you'll see the various formats of word art that you can easily apply to your selected text. If you see a style you like, click on it to select it. You can also create your own text special effects. To the right of the word art gallery, you'll see three choices. Text fill allows you to choose a fill color for your text. Text outline lets you choose an outline color or border for your text. And text effects lets you apply special effects such as shadow, reflection, glow or bevel, just like you can do with images. You can turn your text into several different appearances using these options. Text effects are fun to add to spice up a publication. They also come in handy if you're designing a newsletter, brochure or flyer in Publisher. Take time to play with the text effects and word art styles. Get familiar with how they can change the look and feel of text in your publication. The Format Painter tool is located under the Home tab in the Clipboard group which is this tool here. The Format Painter looks like a broom, but it acts more like a paintbrush. Using it, you can borrow the formatting from text and apply the same formatting somewhere else in your publication. It operates a lot like the copy function in Word, except instead of copying text, you're copying formatting. To use the Format Painter, place your mouse cursor in the middle of the text that has the formatting you want to copy. Now click on the Format Painter button. You'll notice that the cursor changes to a paintbrush. Next, select the text that you want to change to paint it with the borrowed format. You can see that the text format has been updated. You can also use the Format Painter for objects. Simply select the object that you want to borrow the formatting from, click the Format Painter button, and then brush it over the object that you want to share the formatting with. You can see the formatting has been updated. 